We're going to be talking, as Chad said, about unifying schema and supporting interop interop with these Scrum database. I know that's quite a mouthful. We'll get to it. And I'm sure that most of you are actually ready to fill your mouths with food. So we'll try to make this really fast and get you guys to lunch as quickly as possible. So my name is Jess Martin. You can find me on the internet at, at Jess Martin or JessMartin.in. Um, I'm working on a thing called DXOS. So it was on a couple of slides or presentations ago alongside Chaz, which is really great to go right after Anselm and talk about some of these similar projects. All right, so um, before we get to this fancy new world, we need to talk about where we are today. So have you ever been in this situation where you need to add a field to an app that you're working on? Let's say you're working on this contacts app and you've got email and phone and website and someone says, you know, I'd like to add Twitter to this. Um, and then two hours later, you find yourself in this situation where you have three different repositories open and like half dozen changed files and you're thinking, why is this so freaking hard? Well, it turns out that you had to make similar, several similar changes all across the app, right? You had to add a new field to the database or the ORM schema. You had to thread that new field through the API layer or the business logic. Um, you had to reflect that field in your front end state management framework. Thank you, Redux. You had to add a new field to the UI components. But really, all of these changes are about the same thing. They're about making a change to the data model. Now, this isn't pure laziness on the part of developers or framework authors. It's mostly a consequence of the commonly accepted architecture for building web and mobile applications, right? We have client and server. There's several different tiers. We have to keep all of these tiers in sync. And there's only so much unification that you can do. And it gets worse if you add more than one language or technology to your stack. You end up repeating yourself a lot to describe the same data model in all these different parts of your app. Well, can local first software help with that? Absolutely. So we've even though local first software is a set of principles or ideals, we're really seeing a similar architecture emerge across a lot of these frameworks. Jazz, which we just discovered, just, uh, just talked about, has a very similar architecture to what the XOS is working on. And you could basically summarize it in my view as two things: move the database to the front end, and then keep the database in sync through persisting mutations across the front ends. And then you can get into like networking and algorithms, but like that's the core of it. Put the database on the front end and then keep databases in sync by um, persisting mutations across them. Um, when you do that, everything gets a lot simpler like we've already talked about. The API and the back end, those concerns basically disappear and you end up in this flatter area, flatter architecture. Um, and once you have this flat architecture, you can actually just define the schema right alongside the database on the front end. Um, so you end up having this opportunity to potentially define the schema and the data model one time instead of a whole bunch of times. So Martin just showed this slide this morning um, about the local first end game of where we're going. And I think if you squint at what he showed, we're basically talking about the same thing, right? <laughs> We've got these local first apps that run have a database and a little schema and they're communicating with each other. But I want to draw your attention to one funny thing about this slide. There's a local first spreadsheet. And then if I, I can follow a line over to a local first graphics app. Now, I'm not sure that Martin intended this to be that way, but what would it mean for a spreadsheet to talk to a graphics app? The reality is we actually do want our apps to interop, even though we've kind of given up on that dream. I, I could go on and on about this, but since I only have 10 minutes, I just want you to count in your mind the number of software tools that your software team runs to do all of their work from Notion all the way through to like designs to getting like task management, count the number of tools and then give yourself a point anytime two of those tools are integrated with each other. And then think about how hard that and limited that integration is. But if we're in local first world, which we are now, right? We've got the database sitting on the front end. Why not just have one database for all of the applications running in the front end. Why do you have to have one DB per app? So local first architecture, this emerging architectural pattern, opens up a new possibility in the design space where you can unify all of the schema definitions in a single place near the database, and you can have interop interop where the user actually owns the database instead of the application owning the database. I know that's a new idea for you, so we're going to kind of walk through this. I'm going to show you a real system that's built 
this way with unified schema, interop, interop, and user-owned databases using DXOS and a tool that we've been using and really enjoying called Effect Schema. Um, if you have not heard of Effect, this might be your first time hearing about this. Um, it's a basically like a missing the missing standard library for TypeScript. If you're using TypeScript, you should already be using Effect. We're using one sliver of the, the Effect library and Effect Schema, and I'll show you guys a little bit more of what that looks like in just a second. Um, but first, a little primer on DXOS before I show you an example app. So a DXOS app is, DXOS is basically an all-in-one framework for building local first apps. It has something for all the problems that you're going to run into with DXOS um, or when you're building a local first app with, you know, the asterisk of not all problems are solved yet. But there is a data store, um, the Echo data store, that's built on top of auto merge. It also uses effect schema like we talked about. It solves some other problems too, including like building an index for you so you can do things like search across all, a whole bunch of auto merge objects, um, that kind of thing. It solves identity with the uh, Nix talk of public private key encryption. Um, and it also provides the networking layer for you um, so that it syncs currently via peer-to-peer -peer over WebRTC and WebSockets, but we're adding generic sync servers as well to get around the sun turn problem or a peer to peer that we've talked about already today. But the reality is for the app developer, as we've already talked about today, it's like having this magical front end state server or front end state that just synchronizes across all your applications. You don't have to think about it. Um, all right, so here's a, an app that's actually built with DXOS. This is a very standard CRUD contacts app, right? And the only thing that, that is special about this is that it's local first. So it's saved locally. Um, you can make changes, create new contacts, all that kind of stuff. And because it's local first, it syncs across, it's not local only, it syncs across devices. So on the right over here, you'll see my mobile phone. And on the left is a browser. Um, I can synchronize the data across both of those. And then when I make a change on either side, like make a change in the browser, then it will automatically persist over to mobile phone. If I make a change on the mobile phone, it will automatically persist those changes over to the browser. So standard local first stuff. It's too bad that not all software works this way, but like this is pretty neat. What's special about this though, is that this is the entire, this is the definition of the data for the entire app, right? So this leans heavily on effect schema. I know there's some effect folks in the audience, love you guys. Um, and so this is familiar to y'all, but basically we are able to define one time the schema for the entire application. And that handles things like validations. It gives you type checking and it gives you, uh, it's about the same cost as expressing your TypeScript types already, which you're probably doing if you're using TypeScript. Um, and then you get these really nice things that Echo provides in terms of querying by that type, um, adding that type to the database. So now back to our original per challenge. How are we going to add Twitter to that account? Well, you go and add a single line to your schema definition on the right. The app automatically updates, and you're able to add that field. Let me show it to you again, because that was really fast. So all you do is add a single line to the schema. The app refreshes automatically, and then I'm able to go and edit data right away, and it saves in the database right away. One line change instead of 57 changes. So. So local first software's flat architecture allows you to unify all your schema definitions in a single place, but we can push this even further. What if you took the schema for the data schema for the data and saved it to the database? Well, in effect, schema supports serializing the schema as JSON schema. So we're gonna this line will actually persist the schema for that contact that you saw to the database. Now you can have new applications that discover new schemas at runtime. Never heard of a contact and then they know what to do with them. So in order to, to demonstrate that, I'm gonna to need to introduce a new, another application to you. This is Composer. In Composer, Composer is an open source collaborative super app with a modular UI that you can extend and customize to your needs. Now, Composer is built on top of the XOS SDK, so it gets you all the local first magic of like syncing across devices and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it sync, uh, Composer doesn't know anything about our contacts app. Right? It doesn't have a contacts plugin for it yet. Um, but because of uh, the thing that we mentioned earlier, that little device join flow where I just joined my browser to a, a mobile phone, you can do the same thing in DXOS across applications. And then that 
creates a shared echo database across these two. So in this case, I've got composer on the bottom down here and contacts on the top running on separate domains, and they have one shared database between the two of them. So Composer has this table tool. It's, like, it's almost like a data grid. And when you create a new table, you can choose a schema. It, searched, it saw the schema in the database and created the table for it. And now when I make a change in the contacts app on the top, it automatically updates the table down below. Similarly, if I go update the table down below, it automatically updates the um, contact up in the top. Now, let's pause for a minute and think about what's going on here. These are two separate apps running on entirely separate domains. And they're able to interoperate over data when an, one of the apps didn't even know about the schema when it booted up, right? So this, to me, is moving us towards this interoperable app dream, where we're breaking down the walls between domains, databases, and the, the like. So this, what I, I guess the conclusion here would be that local-first software architecture is not only good in all the ways that we've already described, but it also allows you to unify the schema, have your apps interoperate with one another, and allow users to own their databases. Now, two quick caveats, and I'll send you to lunch. There are some open problems um, that we're still working through. Um, distributed migrations are hard. So we have a pragmatic solution to migrations in the XOS right now, but it is guaranteed to lose you data in certain edge cases. And so we need this, that's why we work with this community to like think about things like what would Cambria 2 look like to do like true distributed migrations um, in a way that preserves data over time. So that's a, that's a hard one. I'm happy to talk more about our approach to migrations if you want to come up and talk about it. Um, also, validations for schemas can be described as arbitrary code. But if you're persisting those to JSON schema, how are you going to describe arbitrary code in JSON schema? And what should the execution constraints be around arbitrary code that you just got that's stored in a database? Um, so there's some hard problems around that. But that's just a few of the hard problems we're working on at DXOS. Both DXOS and Composer are open source. Um, we're actively building this. Come help us build it and some, solve some of these hard problems. And let's make better software. Thank you.